What to do YouTube, it's your boy DJ Skinless here and we're back with another video. For this one we're going to break down the recent news of the official press release that Hasbro the toy company has bought out Death Row Records. Let's get it. Alright guys, so I know you guys already know that I already did two videos about this. One on my DJ Skinless page and another on my Skinless Talk page here. And that was really just detailing as to why Hasbro the toy company bought out Death Row Records and how. And that was because they bought out the Entertainment One, the parent company of Death Row Records, and it just so happened that Death Row Records was actually a part of that. But mostly they bought it out because they were really wanting to buy out Entertainment One, which owned very kid-friendly type content and cartoons to go along with their Hasbro toys. And just so happened that Death Row Records was a part of that because Entertainment One actually purchased Death Row Records through Wide Awake, which Wide Awake also purchased Death Row Records back in around 2008-2009 from Bankruptcy Court. And if you are familiar with Entertainment One, the music label, they actually put out albums for the game, and that's mostly the only artist that they really put out for. They don't really release any new Death Row material, and I don't really think that would change. I think mostly Hasbro is just going to get all the royalties from Death Row Records and not really put out anything. And I don't really think we'll see any Death Row toys, even though that would be great to see. Anyways, we got this article here on Genius.com covering the overall topic here at hand. The title reads, Toy Company Hasbro finalizes ownership of Death Row Records. And this goes on to say that the Toy Company Hasbro announced via press release that it now officially owns Death Row Records. The label associated with West Coast Gangs Rap, which had albums by Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Tupac. And this was a $3.8 billion merger which places the Canadian Studio Entertainment One company under Hasbro. Entertainment One purchased Death Row's catalog back in 2013. Some articles saying it was around 280 million, 300 million, but I believe they actually only bought it for 18 million, but I'm not too positive about that. The deal centered on Hasbro's acquisition of the child programming from Entertainment One like Peppa Pig and PJ Mask, as well as Nickelodeon's Ricky Zoom. And this also talks about Ray J. I have a couple of videos on Suge Knight and Ray J where Suge Knight basically gave movie rights and music rights to Ray J. However, Suge Knight doesn't really own any of the Death Row catalog, so I wasn't too sure what he actually meant by that. I guess Ray J thinks that he can release Death Row music, but the only people that can actually do that is Hasbro. As for the two box stuff, the two box stuff was awarded to the two box estate, so not even Hasbro can even release the Death Row era two box content unless it's re releases of All Eyes on Me, Machiavelli, and gang related and gridlock soundtracks. So, like I said, guys, I think the main reason as to why Hasbro is keeping Death Row records is basically just get royalties off the music that was recorded during that time period. I don't think they're going to release anything else. It'll be great to see a new Danny Boy, The Realist album, Val Young, Jewel. But would that get any type of sales or streaming? It's hard to say. I think that would be only beneficial if they would actually use that to beef up their YouTube channels. I think that might be a great route to actually go with that, as well as producing new Death Row merchandise. And not only clothes, you could actually do toys, but I think for the most part they would have to get licenses agreement with Suge Knight, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and the Tupac Estate to actually use their likeness. But something cool like a Tupac Monopoly or Tupac action figures or Death Row era action figures would be amazing to see. Also guys, we've got another article here that actually coincides with what I'm talking about here. Even though we might not get Tupac Hasbro toys, there's actually some Tupac Funko Pops, which now are online. And this is the article on comicbook.com. It says Funko has a tendency to stick to the theme of random periods of times. So when Funko released the Ice Cube Pop, now, Ice Cube 1964 Chevy Impala pop ride earlier this month, we were hoping that more legendary rappers will follow suit. The first and only Tupac Shakur Fungo Pop was released in 2013 and commands extremely high prices these days. So this is the Funko Pop that was released in 2013. And you'll see here, this probably was only around $10, $20 max, and now they're selling it for $150, $3.99, I've seen this on several other shopping sites and eBay a couple years ago, commanded upwards of $500. So now you're going to get the new bandana and vest version, which you can pre-order right now for $10.99, now be released in February. You can also get the Thug Life overalls version, which is an FYE exclusive, but for whatever reason you can't really pre-order that right now. So this is what the main one looks like right now that you can actually pre-order. And this is the Tupac vest and bandana pop. So it's only $10.99. So you figure if you can get a couple of these, you could probably resell a couple of them in maybe three or four or five years. 
down the road for $300 a piece. He also has some cool other ones. You still get the Ice Cube Chevy Impala one, which is awesome because that looks like the today was a good day music video version. You also got a Biggie Smalls here, which you can't really tell how it looks like because it just looks like a cartoon version of what the Funko Pop will look like. But that doesn't release until February 15th as well. And you also have another Ice Cube version here, which you can't really tell what era that it is. That might be Gangster Rap, maybe Do It era, I'm not too sure. All right guys, so drop your comments below how you feel about Hasbro actually finalizing their deal to buy out Entertainment One, which owned Death Row Records. And whether or not you think they'll release new music, maybe even partner with the Tupac Estate to release new versions of the All Eyes On Me songs, Machiavelli songs, and the gang related and gridlock soundtrack songs, which I think they should include those songs on a new Tupac album because they're often overlooked. And also maybe they could partner with them to release new toys and Funko Pops as well. Also drop your comments below if you may actually go out and buy a Funko Pop. All right guys, that's it for today's video. This is DJ Scalen signing out. Peace out.